Hi, today we're going to read Franklin Celebrates. Please like, share, and subscribe. Franklin Celebrates. Franklin could count by twos and tie his shoes. He knew the days of the week, the months of the year, and the holidays in every season. Soon, it would be Halloween, and just as Franklin was beginning to think about ghosts, goblins, and jack-o'-lanterns, he was invited to a party for a holiday that he knew nothing about. Franklin hurried home from school. A letter was waiting for him on the table. Franklin tore open the envelope. It was an invitation. Goose was having a migration eve party on the weekend. A party, exclaimed Franklin. He ran to find his parents. Franklin showed his mother the invitation. What's Migration Eve, he asked. It's a goose holiday, she replied. It marks the day the geese leave their summer homes and fly south for the winter. Franklin was puzzled. But goose doesn't migrate, he pointed out. Her family doesn't, agreed Franklin's mother but lots of her friends and relatives do. Maybe you can ask Goose about Migration Eve at school tomorrow, suggested Franklin's father. But Goose wasn't at school the next day. This is a very special time for Goose, explained Mr. Owl. She's helping her family get ready for the festivities. Franklin told Mr. Owl that he was invited to the Migration Eve party. It's a wonderful celebration, said Mr. Owl. Lots of geese will be there, old and young. There will be special food and songs. Why, you'll probably be taught the migration dance. Franklin looked worried. There's a dance, he asked. After school, Franklin told his mother all about Migration Eve. There'll be lots of food, and I've never eaten, he grumbled. And I'll have to sing songs I don't know. And then I'll have to learn a dance, and I don't want to dance. Franklin took a big bite of his fly and jelly sandwich. Mmm, fly and jelly. Mm -mm -mm. <laughs> and what if I have to talk to geese? I don't know, he added. His mother smiled and gave him a hug. Don't worry, Franklin, she said. Goose will make sure you have a good time. The night before the party, Franklin said his tummy was jumpy. Maybe I shouldn't go tomorrow, he said. I don't think I should eat strange food and dance around. Oh dear, said his mother as she tucked him into bed. I was counting on your help tomorrow. I want to make a blueberry pie to send to Mrs. Goose. Franklin sighed. <sighs> At least there'd be one thing at the party he could eat. In the morning, Franklin helped his mother make two blueberry pies. Then he scrubbed his face and hands and put on his best clothes. Now remember to say please and thank you, said his mother. And have fun, said his father. Franklin nodded. But I'm not going to dance, he mumbled. When Franklin arrived, Goose's home was overflowing with guests. Tables were set up on the lawn and piled high with food. A band played music and goslings ran about everywhere, sneaking treats from the dessert table and scampering off to hide. Franklin, cried Goose, I'm so glad you're here, honk. Mrs. Goose took Franklin's pies. Thank you, Franklin, she said, honk, how thoughtful. Goose led Franklin across the lawn First, let's eat, she said. You have to try some of everything. Honk! Franklin felt his tummy begin to flip-flop, but then he looked at the food. The food is all normal, he said. Goose looked puzzled. Of course it's normal, she replied, and it's yummy. Goose heaped Franklin's plate with a bit of everything. We always begin with ice cream, she explained. That reminds us that the cold is coming. 
Then we have mashed potatoes. They're like the clouds we fly through on our way south. Then a cob of corn covered in butter. That's yellow for the sun on our wings. Franklin ate and ate and listened to Goose talk about her traditions. And we finish with a donut, but you have to share it with someone. That means we're sharing our journey together. Franklin smiled and gave half of his donut to Goose. When Goose left to help her mother, she introduced Franklin to her Grampy and Grammy. Franklin sat down and wondered what to say. Is it hard to migrate? He finally asked. Oh, very hard, replied Grampy, and dangerous too. Then Grampy told one tale after another. Franklin listened wide-eyed to the scary stories. He laughed when Grampy told the funny story about how great Uncle Goosebert lost his tail feathers. Grampy talked until he fell asleep. <coughs> Thank you, Franklin, said Grammy. You've been a wonderful listener, and Grampy loves to tell his tales. Franklin grinned. Soon, Goose came rushing over for Franklin. We're starting the migration dance. Come on. All the geese were in a V formation on the lawn. Franklin tried to hang back, but Goose tugged on his arm. Soon, he was standing in formation with everybody else. Stomp, stomp, stomp. Clap, clap, clap. Lift your wings and flap, flap, flap. Turn to the moon and do si do Bow to where the warm winds blow. Shimmy, shimmy, shimmy. Shake, shake, shake. Now it's time to migrate. In no time at all, Franklin was singing and stomping and laughing with the others. When it was time for the real migration to begin, there were hugs and tears and shouted goodbyes. Those who were leaving lined up on the hillside. Franklin stood beside Goose. They watched as the V formation of geese flew across the moon. One day, I will be with them, Franklin, whispered Goose. Franklin smiled at his friend. I sure hope you invite me to your party, said Franklin. I wouldn't miss Migration Eve for anything. <laughs> Well, that was a sweet story. We like Franklin. I hope you did too. As Tigger says, ta-ta for now. Love you guys. Bye-bye.